Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, hi, how are you doing? It's me, Zach, and I'm in a brand new space. Um, so this is not the final look of this space. If you didn't see my community post, I moved. <laughs> and with moving came a, a series of issues, which is why this particular recap is a little bit later than I guess I sometimes do. Although there have been a few recaps of the 1000 Pound Sisters that have come out late. So, you know, maybe it's just par for the course. But I have been moving, getting settled into this new space. When I got settled, when I was setting everything up, the lights and stuff, I went to go test out all the lighting and stuff with my camera. My camera was dead. R.I.P. <laughs> she, she's gone. And I had to get a new camera and I have been learning how to use the new camera, which means I filmed a whole recap yesterday. And when I went to go edit it, it was just constantly pulling in and out of focus. And I was like, I can't I can't have that because I'm getting a headache just trying to edit this video, let alone what y'all would see. So thank you for your patience. Oh, also there might be a small echo because, well, I don't know, small, big, an echo regardless because I normally have these big sound treatment things on the wall and we haven't had a chance to put that up yet. So thanks for your patience. I hope that this is still a enjoyable video for you, but I also wanna jump right on in to the recap of the 1000 Pound Sisters, cause y'all, the season finale was juicy, although some of it maybe not as juicy if you've been following Tammy on social media and you knew what was coming and you knew what was going on and you knew what her state of being is right now. So what I will say is before we get into the episode, if you wanna go check out Amy's YouTube channel, she did this weekend post a gender reveal video for her baby that she's currently pregnant with. And I don't know, personally for me, not a fan of gender reveal parties. It's not my gig. I'm also not a parent. I'll also not have kids. So maybe that's not for me to say, but as like an LGBTQIA person, I just like, I'm not a big fan of them. I have a whole video actually on this channel. If you go back far enough, it was like one of the first videos I ever posted over here. Yeah, not not for me, but if that is your gig, if that's something you're interested in or you just wanna support Amy, make sure to go check out her channel and see what's up with that. And the other thing is, is that Tammy went live on TikTok like several different times and people, interestingly, like felt the need to to message me and or interrupt live streams of mine on Twitch to be like, Zach, Tammy's live, Tammy's live. And it's just like, if Tammy's live and like saying something interesting, ha happy to go give it a check out. But like, literally people came into my live stream expecting me to like stop everything to go watch Tammy be live. And you know what? I did, I did, I did stop. And you know what she was doing? Sitting there. Just full on sitting there, not even really doing anything. Honestly, because I just told you I moved this past weekend slash this week because like even on the days we weren't moving, we were getting ready to move. So I didn't have time to just go sit and watch Tammy do jack shit. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Listen, I appreciate y'all trying to keep me up on the tee. And honestly, if she does something interesting during those things and y'all wanna send me like specific clips or specific tea from those live streams, I appreciate that. I will never turn it away, but like just, just her being live alone is not newsworthy. <laughs> like her going live and sitting there doing nothing, not newsworthy. Now I will say, and because I was moving, I didn't get a chance to respond to Megan from Instagram, but Megan from Instagram did tell me that some of the tea that she got out of watching this live stream is that Tammy says she's gonna be able to remove the trach once she loses some more weight. And then she also, I guess, mentioned that she would have to sign some new contracts before they like agreed to start filming a, a fourth season, which I feel like is par for the course. That's been how it's happened every season so far. It seemed like they didn't know that the next season was coming until the, the current season stopped airing. So I would expect that we will probably have a pretty good idea based on like the scheduling and the calendar of previous seasons that they are filming a fourth season in the next few months. And honestly, I don't see a reason why they would stop 
making 1,000 pound sisters outside of something like horribly terrible happening to Tammy and by that I mean like Tammy passing away like I honestly think that's the only thing that would keep them from continuing to film that or like the family just being like we're done we don't want to do this anymore which I, I also don't necessarily see so I would anticipate a season four because Honestly, TLC has the audience. People enjoy this show. People have been enjoying watching. And TLC has seen that and even started another 1,000 pound franchise, which is the 1,000 pound best friends, which I will start recapping next week if you're interested. So with all of that being said, let's actually get into the season finale of the 1,000 pound sisters. And the episode starts off with Amy and Michael in their hotel room, which is where we left off with the last episode, taking the pregnancy test, and Amy lets us know that this has been the longest two minutes of her life. This is the longest two minutes you've had? No, I've had longer two minutes. It didn't even take two minutes to conceive him. I appreciate Amy. I appreciate Amy being able to make a good joke. She really is a comedian. She really is. Y'all are sleeping on her. Let's get her into the second city here in Chicago. Let's get her some improv classes. But it turns out Amy, at least in this moment, is not pregnant, which is fine because I, she's sad. She is sad on the show. Like, she clearly won, wanted to be pregnant. But it's all good, because she we know she, now she is. We know now she is pregnant. It just was not this pregnancy test that told her. It was not this moment that she was actually pregnant. So that, like, egg and grape salad combo thing, it, it, clearly Amy was just hungry. It was not a sign of her being pregnant. The next scene we get is a little moment between Chris and Tammy. Chris is coming over to talk about how his appointment with Dr. Smith went. He also just, like, randomly shares that he's always wanted a three-piece suit, which I think is mostly just TLC throwing that in somewhere because they need to let us know so that we can be really proud of him later in the episode when he gets a three-piece suit. It didn't really have any relevance to the conversation, in my opinion, that they were having, but just know, later, later in the show, it's gonna be relevant because Chris wants a three-piece suit and, and then he shows his three-piece suit to everybody. Chris does let Tammy know that while he was at the doctor, Dr. Smith asked him how Tammy was doing and he didn't hold back. He told Dr. Smith the whole truth, basically let her know also that Dr. Smith might come and make a house call. And one thing that I thought was interesting is that Tammy made this claim and then Chris backed it up, but <laughs> Tammy made this claim that Dr. Smith was the one that didn't want her to come back. And whenever this happened, I was like, when did this happen? Like, at this part of the episode, I was thinking, like, what, what is she talking about? Like, I do not remember him saying, don't come back. And then, later in the episode, but I'll talk about it here because it's relevant. Later in the episode, Dr. Smith does say, I told her not to come back until she was, like, serious and actually trying because it was basically just a waste of her time to be coming all this way to see me when she hasn't been working to lose any weight or trying I mean, whoever, whatever. She was interpreting it as like, oh, he gave up on me, so I'm just like not gonna bother. The reality is, is he said, I'm not giving up on you, I just don't wanna waste your time. <laughs> so I thought that that was interesting that that was the way that she interpreted things. I don't know, maybe, I feel like there was maybe a little bit of her making excuses, finding a way to place blame on other people. But she was basically saying in this scene that she was surprised that he was coming because she felt like he didn't wanna work with her anymore. And I'm like, Girl, what? <laughs> what? And in this scene, Tammy once again says this. I just want everybody to leave me alone and let me do me. And I don't know, maybe I already like went too far in on this and like said this and maybe I'm repeating myself this week. <laughs> but I feel like, girl, when you say you want to just be left alone to do your own thing, like, do you realize what that would really mean? Like, do you, do you realize when you say that that, that means like, people could just stop bringing you food, stop taking care of you, stop helping you, stop doing all the things you need to live in this home. Like, do you realize that that's like really what, and honestly, honestly, I feel like that's what her family should do. They should just be like, oh, you, you wanna, you wanna do your own thing? Well, you, let's do it. 
<laughs> do it. See what happens. I, I won't travel to come see you. I won't travel to come help you, bring you food, whoever, whatever. You can do it on your own then, it sounds like. That's how I would interpret it. I know that's not how Tammy means it, but like... That's what it should mean. Tammy also, during this scene, talks about how she wants people to see her as more than her weight and wants to be more than her weight, which, like, I agree. Like, her weight is a single aspect of her identity, but to deny how <laughs> that aspect of her identity impacts her ability to be herself, to go do the things she wants to do, I think she's kind of missing that. Also, you're on a show called The 1000 Pound Sisters. So at this point, it's like pretty, <laughs> pretty central to like your identity in relation to the show that you're on and filming. So of course, a lot of the conversations are gonna be about your weight because that's the show you're on, bestie. <laughs> that's the show you're on, that's the show you're doing. So I don't know, I, I also don't really believe that like weight has to be a person's entire identity, but certainly at the point that Tammy is at right now, it is impacting the way she, she is experiencing the world around her. Like, I mean, just thinking about how she talked about how she likes to travel and would like to travel more. Like that's limited by that part of her identity, the, the weight part of her identity, the being fat part of her identity, you know? If anything, it should be motivation to her to like work on herself, get healthy, so that she can start investing in these other parts of who she thinks she is outside of her weight. They also show this clip of Tammy struggling to breathe. What's that, Tammy? I'm sorry. No, no, no. Are you still getting enough air? <coughs> yeah. Are you sure? And I feel like ultimately they included this because they want to like foreshadow events that l happen later. But I think it's also just important to recognize that in this episode, even in comparison to last week's episode, Tammy's health is declining. Like it's so clear. It's also kind of wild how much of a difference you can see just from like last week's episode, let alone like the beginning of the season and the state that Tammy was in at the beginning of the season. Ultimately, Tammy agrees to talk to Dr. Smith if he does come. I think at this point she is starting to realize like, I'm gonna have to do something. Like, I'm not feeling great all the time. I'm gonna need some help. The next scene is Amy and Michael throwing a one-year-old birthday party for Gage, which in general is very cute if if you like to tune in to see fun, cute moments of just Amy and Michael being parents and seeing Gage do cute, silly stuff like this is your this is your time. They do briefly show a clip of Amy and Michael meeting with a dietitian. They also bring Gage along. Um, basically, Amy is like, I want to be a good mom. I want to make sure that I know what to feed my kid <laughs> so that he's getting like all the nutrients and things like that that he needs. I did see some discourse amongst people who follow me on Twitch about how like it's a little weird to take a less than one year old baby to a dietitian. And in general, I feel like it might be a little bit different if that baby had the like cognizant skills to <laughs> understand what was going on and like understand that his parents were meeting to determine what good and bad foods were and things like that. But I genuinely, my interpretation of what Amy was trying to do here was to utilize the resources and skills that TLC was able to provide in terms of money <laughs> so that she could go learn about it. Because it's clear, I mean, just watching the show that Amy has very little knowledge, well, at least prior to having gastric bypass surgery, she had very little knowledge about like health, nutrition, things like that. And she wants to just be able to do the best for her kids. So I saw it as like a positive. Granted, I do think it's like, it would be weird if like she was taking like her six year old child to a dietitian and the dietitian was like, you need to eat XYZ things if you don't want to be fat or something like that, you know? But I feel like she was genuinely just trying to learn about how to provide a healthy diet to her children. This scene also had the little bit shot of the week. I also am going to give you two little bit shots of the week because this is like literally the final, the final episode of the season and it'll be a very long time before we get more little bit shots of the week, but I did enjoy this one because she's just over there perched, 
She's perched. She's watching the, the setup of the party. She's watching Amy and Michael struggle to put that tablecloth on the table. And she's just looking so cute. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. But there will be a second, so stay tuned. The theme of the party is aquariums, ocean, coral reef, marine biology. <laughs> and I only really point this out because I am obsessed with Michael's uh, fish o'clock shirt. Like, where do I get one? I have so many ideas on all the places I would love to wear it. All the parties I'd love to go wearing this shirt, like I need it. It's iconic. It's truly everything I would ever want in a t-shirt. So the family starts showing up, Amanda shows up, up and I just, I would be doing you all so wrong if I didn't include <laughs> this clip of Amy and Amanda discussing the fact that this is a surprise party. Okay, yeah, all right. she's gonna bring him in, it's a surprise party. Well, he's one, he's not gonna really know Exactly, you. yeah. <laughs> I am on the same page as Amanda. When when she said it was a surprise party, I was like, bestie, he's fucking one. What is he gonna know? He's one years old. Just like he's not gonna know shit fuck about what that dietitian is saying, he also has no idea what's going on with this birthday party, bestie. <laughs> like, no idea whatsoever. There was a little bit of worry that Tammy wouldn't show up, but she does pull through, she does come in. And she somehow, like, lost her voice. She sounded real bad. And she claims, somebody's like, Tammy, girl, how'd you lose your voice? And she claims, she claims she lost her voice at a haunted forest. And when she said that, I literally paused. And this is me. This is a reenactment. This is me, professional actor Zachary Michael, reenacting it. I was like... In what fucking world is Tammy going to some kind of haunted attraction, a haunted forest, and screaming and a hooping and a hollering and walking through this? I would assume walking through. Are they pushing her in her wheelchair through this haunted forest and she's hooping and a hollering and somehow losing her voice and she could do all that, but she couldn't go up a step to the mountain cabin situation type of deal to spend time with her family on vacation. She couldn't go up a small step to go into Amy's new house, but she could go through a haunted forest. Shit's not adding up, y'all. <laughs> Shit is not adding up. Genuinely though, Amy and I are on the same page about this. She says she lost her voice at the haunted forest. Bitch, you just hung over. Let's be real. You sat there lying. Well, at least you hear it. Overall, though, it seems like they were able to have a good time despite Tammy being there. I know, believe it or not, they had a good time. So I'm going to put that in the win column for everybody involved because it's been a while since they had a family function where Tammy was present and she didn't cause some kind of a scene. Let's be honest. And Tammy says at some point that she's so happy to be there and that she wouldn't have missed this for the world for his first birthday. And I'm just like, okay, now let's give that energy to his second, his third, his fourth, his fifth birthday, his sixth birthday, because realistically, that's the kind of like attitude we need to have moving forward, right? Like we need to have this, this mindset that like you want to be around, you don't want to miss gauge growing up for the world okay let's let's put that into perspective that's the kind of like energy i want tammy to take into the future and i do have to say you know i i always love to highlight the fun quirky things that amy says and i do have to say i have no problem with with her <laughs> saying words funny or not using proper grammar i love it and honestly my philosophy on things is that as long as I understand what you're trying to communicate to me, then then we're good. We're good. That's that's my philosophy these days on like people who mispronounce words or say the wrong words or things like that. I would be amiss to leave out this clip of what Amy hopes Dr. Smith can do. I'm hoping Dr. Smith can like 
intervent Tammy. But also, <laughs> moments later in the same scene of the episode, I was dying at them trying to take a photo of... <laughs> <laughs> trying to take a photo of the whole group and Amy's got you know when you get those cakes from the grocery store and they just use that real strong ass blue dye they say smile Amy smile Amy <laughs> So the next scene is Amy and Chris meeting with Dr. Smith at a little coffee shop before he goes and does his house call visit to Tammy. And I have to say, I know I've said a lot about Dr. Proctor. I do still find him very much to be like a very attractive man. In fact, I even this past weekend had time to share this particular Instagram post he made on my Insta stories because like, wow, he is jacked. But with all due respect, I do need to give credit where credit is due. And I'm here to say that Dr. Smith could also get it. <laughs> he could also get it. Especially because this is one of the first times we've seen him in just like civilian clothes. Like he's just out and about in his regular like wardrobe, not in scrubs, looking real good, real good. And they share some of their concerns with Dr. Smith about Tammy drinking and vaping and things like that. And he also shares his concerns and talks a lot about how people replace different types of addictions, AKA food addiction, with other substance addictions like alcohol in this case. And so he is also very concerned. They talk a lot about how Tammy is saying that she's trying to focus on her mental health, but they're all in agreement that like, you're not gonna find happiness, peace with your mental health, etc., through a whiskey bottle, <laughs> a bottle of alcohol in general. And so they're, they're all generally concerned. Dr. Smith also says that Tammy needs to find her rock bottom and that clearly hasn't happened yet. I think I even like included that in my thumbnail last week. I was like, is this rock bottom? I agree, like I think she's gonna have to get to rock bottom before she really does anything. But I also agree with Amy of like, what is rock bottom? But what is rock bottom for her? She's already had, been on life support. That, I don't that's know. That's the variable. That's what I'm saying. That's the variable. Rock bottom we all, we all. So Dr. Smith makes his house call to Tammy and she seems generally happy to see him. Like it's the happiest I feel like I've seen her on this show in quite a few episodes. So I, I feel optimistic about that. Like we really haven't had the opportunity to just see her genuinely happy. She does acknowledge her mental health struggles and how her depression is worse when she's alone. And so she talks about how that's the reason that she's just trying not to focus on dieting and trying not to focus on like romantic relationships with people because she just really wants to focus on trying to be happy. So Dr. Smith asks her what a typical day for her looks like and she shares this. So tell me what your, how your days are going. Mostly partying. Are you? I don't want to lecture. And I feel like it's pretty bold of Tammy to be like, I don't want to lecture. Because uh, <laughs> like, girl, you need to be lectured. Something needs to happen. But I do agree with that with Dr. Smith. Like, it's probably not going to do any good for him to sit there and lecture her. Like, at, at this point, what what is that going to do or change? But he does follow up with like, how much are you drinking on a regular basis? And Tammy says eight fucking bottles of liquor. Like eight. <laughs> My bestie, what the fuck? Like honestly, what are you doing? I can't even imagine when I was like young, when I had a much younger body and I was 21 and I was in college and I was doing my own partying. I can't imagine drinking that much. That's like a little over a whole bottle of liquor per day. <laughs> per, per day. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot. I cannot imagine feeling good and drinking that much a week. And she also says this very concerning statement. I know turning to alcohol and vaping and stuff isn't the way to go. I know it could, can be doing more damage to me than whatever, but... I just want to be free. And to me, the part where she just was like, wants to be free, to me, that sounds like giving up. To me, that sounds like there's nothing else I can do. And if I die from this behavior, I die from this behavior. 
And I think that that's just like the reality of the very grim place that Tammy is at in this episode. I feel like it's clear that like she's getting closer and closer to her rock bottom. And so I don't know, it, that part was just like particularly hard to watch for me. But I do appreciate that Dr. Smith is so cognizant of like how to work with people who are experiencing mental health struggles and like offers his phone for her to call <laughs> should she ever need him because it's clear that Tammy doesn't feel like she has like a place to go when she's feeling like that, when she's feeling depressed, when she's feeling extra, extra, extra depressed and alone. And Tammy also talks about how she doesn't know how to ask for help, but ultimately Dr. Smith was like, well, you're doing it now. You're telling me you need help. Like, this is it. Like, there you go. And I, I think to some extent, myself included, like people probably are like, what do you mean you don't know how to ask for help? You ask for all kinds of other things. You ask for all kinds of help when it comes to like getting food, going places, whoever, whatever. But you know, asking for help when it comes to mental health related things is a little different. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so much stigma around it that it is pretty difficult to, to ask people for help. So I appreciate that she's finally coming around and asking for it. It might seem like too little too late, but like it's important that she did. Dr. Smith does let her know that the rehab facility that she was in at the beginning of the season is still an option. They'd still love to have her. And I have to say, one thing I appreciate about this episode is that there are several times where they prove these dumbass internet <laughs> articles wrong. So if you don't remember, there was this article with the alleged baby mama of the BBW King, where she was saying that the facility, the rehab facility that Tammy was in, didn't want her, didn't want her to be there, didn't want them to film in there. And it's just like, clearly that's wrong. Clearly that's not true because one, they already did film in there at the beginning of the season, but two, <laughs> they're gonna go back and film some more in there. They're happy to have Tammy back. Like, it's clear that, that there were aspects of that article from the BBW King's baby mama that were just like, inherently wrong and this is why you should read them all critically if you're gonna read them at all. She says she's not ready to go back at this point to the rehab facility and Dr. Smith also encourages her to consider a therapist which she says she's ready to do. So then all of a sudden TLC feels like it's important to keep us on a timeline so that we know when things are happening although they, they haven't been giving us the timeline for the majority of the season, so who knows what month, day, whoever, whatever, they're actually filming in at this given <laughs> moment. But I would assume it's sometime around like September, October 2021, especially considering that Gage was having a birthday and whoever, whatever. So it's two weeks after Dr. Smith's house call and Chris is having a surprise party. They're all kind of like, what is this about? Why are we doing this? All, his whole family's there. Actually, I don't remember if Tammy was there or not. I think she was. She was there. She was there. She was there. But the family's all there. They're like, we don't know what's going on, but there's food. So we're happy to be here and eat it. And then Chris comes out in his three-piece suit. Oh! Sookie, sookie. You look really good, Chris. And I do have to say he looks really sharp. Like he looks real good. And honestly, buying a suit is such an annoying thing to do if you've never done it before. <laughs> like it's very hard to just buy a suit off a rack and have it look good without some kind of tailoring because we're all different shapes, sizes, heights, whoever, whatever. I don't know, maybe I'm saying that as like a six foot two tall person. Like <laughs> it's extremely difficult to just get a suit off the rack. I, I, every suit I've ever gotten, I've had to have tailored in some kind of way. But he looks so happy, his family's so happy for him and I'm so happy for him. Like, wow, he, he just has like a different aura. Like he just clearly looks like he's happier in a better place and I'm proud of him. And here is my second little bit shot of the week. And it is particularly included because little bits just stick in our little tongue out. And I just love, especially when small dogs have the little tongue that just sticks out because of their teeth. And honestly, Judy's does that a lot. Although sometimes you can't see from all the like fur and hair on her face, but she does it as well. And I just, it's just so cute. I love it. 
I love it so much. A little bit so cute. So now it's one month later and we see Tammy FaceTiming with Dr. Smith and she's just calling to let him know that she feels like her health and depression has gotten way worse and it's clear actually just like in listening to her talk that it is. Like it is. Um so down like a lot I'm drinking and partying honestly it was just like fed up with me and sick all the time and just everything like, can you, can you hear the difference even from a little bit earlier in this episode? Like, she sounds real rough. So she lets Dr. Smith know she's ready to go back to rehab and that this time she's doing it for herself and nobody else. So everybody wants me to go to rehab and do what they want me to do, but I'm not doing this for anybody but myself. And I guess I just like, take interest in this particular statement because it's like, girl, that is what everybody has always wanted. Ever like, yes, some of them have motivations for themselves, AKA they would like to not have to wait on you hand and foot. But like, ultimately, everybody in your family has always wanted you to do this for yourself. And I'm glad that you can finally see that you need to do this for yourself and not other people. Like you need to do it not based on motivation to make other people happy. But like, girl, this is what everybody's wanted for a while now. You know what I'm saying? You know, thank God for Tammy, because Amy didn't give us any poop, pee, fart, whoever, whatever jokes <laughs> this week. And Tammy gave us two great moments this episode related to the bathroom and or farting. And this is the first one where Dr. Smith asked her when she realized she was ready to go back to rehab. I think I was, I know I was going to the bathroom. I'm not going to. I'm sorry, but that's when I realized I was like, I'm done. So thank you so much for that, Tammy. Truly, I appreciate it. And Tammy says she's ready to go back for eight months to a year, however long it takes to get to the weight she needs to be. And Dr. Smith says that they'll also work on getting her connected with a mental health professional while she's in rehab. And also if she gets down to 550 pounds, that he will make arrangements to get her surgery if she is still in the rehab. So I feel like from this conversation, at least at a minimum, things are looking up. So then it's three days later and the gang gets together to ship Tammy off. And again, here's Tisa. Although Tisa was also at Gage's birthday party. I didn't really mention it back then, but here's Tisa ready to join the party to ship people off. And I'm so excited because there was that whole stupid article that was like, what happened to Tisa? Is she no longer on the show? Because she didn't show up for like two episodes while they were literally on vacation. So here's Tisa, happy to see her. Hi Tisa, how are you doing? <laughs> Good to see ya. And this whole scene is actually super emotional for me. It's just so touching to see that her family like truly cares about her even after she has treated them like shit at different points. I think that's sometimes the, the thing when it comes to things like addiction and things where like your family members just don't want to help themselves. Like you still care. You still care about them. You still want them to do better. And I was honestly, truly the most touched by Mama Slayton. Tammy, I want you to know I love you. And I know you've got it this time. I've been proud of you ever since you were born. You were the first girl to ever graduate Abba Slayton with honors. I am so proud of you, and I know you've got this. You know, they say three times the charm. Well, you're gonna prove them wrong and say it's gonna happen in two times. Like her sharing all of that emotion, was just so unexpected from her, to be honest with you. In the first season, Mama Slayton was, for lack of a better word, a bitch. Like, she was just not kind. It was clear that the show was painting her to be, like, a lot of the reasons that Amy and Tammy had the problems that they do, and Mama Slayton was not great, but, like, seeing just, like, how proud she was of Tammy, like, I honestly got very emotional watching it. I, it made me just so emotional to see how much Mama Slayton did care, and I genuinely believed the words that were coming out of her mouth. And in general, it was just so sad to see all of them 
like saying goodbye to Tammy because I knew what was coming up. Like I knew that it was likely going to be the case that we we're gonna see at least the beginning of this like health scare that Tammy talked about on TikTok a few months ago. Like I knew it was probably coming at the end of this episode. So I was like, oh my God, they're all saying goodbye. And like, they don't realize like what's gonna happen. They don't realize that Tammy is gonna be put into like a, a coma, like a medically induced coma. Like they don't realize that this is all coming up. So I was just like very emotional. I'm a little emotional now even thinking about it. Although this is like the second, third time I've talked about it. So like the emotions don't look exactly the same, but it was sad. It was sad. And also like not everybody's lucky to have family like that. Like not everybody has a family who's going to support you even when you are like a shitty person to them. And I'm just like, in a lot of ways, I don't envy <laughs> everything in Amy and Tammy's life. But I, I do envy like the connection they have with their family. Like I, I truly believe that at the end of the day, the Slayton family, they have each other, they have each other's backs. So then we see their trip to the rehab facility. Chris and Brittany are driving Tammy all the way there. And six hours into the trip, Tammy's like, why am I so sleepy? My oxygen's at 65. And so they hook Tammy up to her BiPAP machine, which is the recommendation from the rehab facility. And I'm happy to say that at the very end, Tam Tam Gucci makes another appearance. <laughs> Good. Now, Tammy, I just want you to take slow, deep breaths. Okay? A oh, Gucci. And I'm also happy to say that Tam Tam Gucci gave us our very last fart moment of the season. Oh, huh? Oh, Oh, Lord. <laughs> Love it. What are you going to do it to us in the cold weather, fall? <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, uh, Tam Tam Gucci, for all you've contributed in this final episode. They do ultimately make it back to the rehab facility. They drop Tammy off. She seems to be in good spirits, feeling better. But then it cuts to uh, all of these confessionals with the family, with Chris, with Amanda, with uh, Amy. Uh, I think also Misty has some confessionals, and they're all talking about how the next day... After, after Chris and Brittany dropped her off, the rehab facility had to rush Tammy to the hospital because she stopped breathing um, and they put her in a medically induced coma. If you didn't catch my video covering a TikTok where Tammy actually talked about this experience, I'll leave it linked in a pinned comment down below. But basically, if you didn't see that and you don't know what happened, they did a pretty good job of covering most of it. I think the only thing they left out is that Tammy was also septic, and they also didn't explain that she had carbon dioxide poisoning, which was the reason that she stopped breathing. Um, but otherwise, everything that they said that happened on the show is what Tammy said happened in her TikTok. So she was in the coma for like, I think a week or something, and then she stayed in the hospital for three more weeks. And then they shipped her to, shipped her, that's probably not the right word, but they moved her to a re, back to the rehab facility. It was tough. It was very difficult watching the end of that episode and hearing people like Amanda say like, wow, I feel like she decided to get help too late. Like I, I thought we were going to lose her. I thought we weren't going to have her anymore. You know, it was, it was tough to see her make that breakthrough. Tammy made a breakthrough where she was like, okay, I'm going to commit to getting help again. Like I'm ready to change. And then have that be the result, have that be the, the issue that be the thing that happened when she finally decided to get help. It felt like it's too little too late, but I'm so grateful that Tammy did make it through. I think Chris said in the 30 days that she was in the hospital, she lost 115 pounds. So I hope she can, I mean, granted, she lost that through being clearly very, very sick, but I hope she can, you know, keep that, that momentum going and working on her health and getting better and removing her trach like we talked about at the beginning of this video. I said this in the video where I covered her, her health update from TikTok, but she, she's a human and regardless of how you feel about Tammy, how you feel about how she treats other people on the show. She's still a human and she's clearly a, a troubled human. She's clearly dealing with mental health issues. 
she's clearly dealing with a lot of trauma and none of that excuses the way that she treated her family, right? Like none of that excuses how horrible she was to Amanda and Amy and Chris and Misty. Like it doesn't, it, it truly doesn't, but it does remind us that she's still human. And this experience reminds us that she's still human. And she's a human on reality TV where like, if she hadn't done all of that, if she hadn't caused all of that drama, the show would not have been as interesting as you all find it to be. You know what I'm saying? So like, my my heart goes out to Tammy. I've also talked to Tammy one-on-one -on -one in DMs and things like that. And like, she's always been super sweet to me. And I can only hope that like, she gets better, that we get several more seasons of the 1000 Pound Sisters because I love this show. I love the Slaytons. I enjoy coming here and, and connecting with you all, talking about our favorite show. And I, I hope that she keeps on keeping on, you know, you feel me? So that's it. That's the end of the season. That's all we got. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Did you love the episode? Did you hate the episode? Are you hoping for a, a fourth season? I know I am. Um, and if this is your first video on my channel, make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. Also, make sure to leave a comment, hit like, click share, and join me next week for a recap of the 1,000 pound besties because I'll be doing that over here as well. I love you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.